Here is the Broadman's cottage, perched on a low hill overlooking the broad. From his door, over which is trained a creeper, down to the sedgy border of the mere, extends his patch of garden, in which rise banks green with celery and rows of blossoming potatoes, straggling peas and scarlet runners. Whilst here and there are scattered patches of pot herbs destined to season the coot stew. Near the cottage door stand some straw beehives around which the bees hum in the summer sun. In a little dike is moored his boat with the sail up. He is getting ready his e eel nets and at eventide will be seen sailing down the broad towards his eel cabin, which is moored in another dike nearby. This is the sanctuary of this idyllic bohemian. His mother and wife, two kindly souls, welcome us to the cottage. His woman folk are shrewd and intelligent, although the old woman believes in witchcraft. Over the tall mantel shelf is hung the well-kept gun. In a corner are liggers, trimmers, and a broken bow net. In another corner stand his oars and meek. Thus lives this lake dweller, surrounded by his tools and weapons. The Broadman's life is full of pleasant variety, even as the ever-changing picture gallery which the seasons offer. With the fall of the leaf, the rush turns to a golden yellow, the alders put on a velvety coat of purple, and the lake is of the deepest blue. Gulls fly waywardly across the water under the scudding clouds. Now comes the frost, and the broad is a sheet of ice, while the landscape around is hushed into stillness in its snowy cloak. The sky is leaden, and the air is rent by the cries of snipe and plover, of gall and curlew. Let us listen to the broad man this laborer, waterman, sportsman, naturalist, and philosopher, as he tells us of his battle for life. With August, shooting begins. In the early morning, with his dog and gun, he sets off in his marsh boat and goes paddling gently round the rush, killing perhaps a water hen, perhaps a coot for his dinner. All day long, he will be mowing the marsh hay and at nightfall you will hear the clank of his oar over the still waters as he rows down to his eel cabin. Here, after setting his net and lighting his pipe, he sits in his cabin with the door ajar, now and again having to lower the rope on which the net is stretched to allow the passage of a belated boat or wherry. The night is disturbed by the cries of wildfowl, and now and then the ignis fatuus in its fiery glory shoots across the landscape. Through the long watches sits our friend, smoking his pipe and watching his net. When mowing the marsh hay is over, after the hay is pulled and stacked, he turns his attention to the gladden, which has already begun to show the yellow leaf. He is now seen daily in his huge marsh boat, with his meek, cutting and sheaving the long leaves which he sells at a good profit. As the winter draws on, he dries and packs his eel nets, locks his cabin door, and those haunts know him no more until the following summer. Now, at eventide, you will see him in his boat with dog and gun, hidden in a clump of reed, waiting for the flight of duck and plover. There he will sit patiently until the darkness sends him home, generally with a bird or two for his supper. Thus, from the beginning to the end of the year, he lives a life bound by no hours, and 
subject to no master save nature. And now we pledge the honest Broadman and his wife and family in their own excellent home-brewed beer, wishing them a long life, for a happy one it is. And as we leave them, we think we know one spot at least where lives a family of practical philosophers.